Um, look, thanks so much for the invitation uh, to be with you here today. As a constituency MP, I'm always delighted to celebrate investment uh, in my constituency, uh, creating these opportunities for local people to work here um, and investing in the local economy. But as we've heard already from our um, friend from the department, um, this is a great case study for what we need to see happening in the British economy more broadly. Uh, we've heard how we're already bolstering supply chains within the UK. We've heard how we're exporting uh, products around the world. Um, this is the type of business that we need to see, not just here, but in every part of, of the UK, to, talk, to, to turn the tide on some of the difficult economic uh, factors that we're dealing with at the moment. So thank you for the investment and thank you for all of your uh, hard work. Uh, with my national uh, hat on, as opposed to my local hat, um, decarbonizing heating uh, is a massive headache. Uh, I did a whole parliamentary select committee on decarbonizing heat and I had basically lots of people shouting at each other in front of me. Uh, and it was essentially um, the oil and gas hydrogen lobby um, and the heat pump lobby, both trying to tell me that it was either them or them. And then I had some other interested technologies, heat networks and others saying, don't, don't, don't forget about us. Uh, and I entirely agree with what we heard from the Sustainable uh, Energy Association that there isn't one silver bullet to decarbonizing heating across the country. It's one of those areas in policy where we're really behind. We're making good progress on decarbonizing electricity, more to do. Uh, we've started to decarbonize industry, more to do. Heating has been very, very difficult, and yet the Committee on Climate Change tell us um, that it's the second largest national priority for reducing our carbon emissions around the country. And we also know that it's the area of decarbonisation that involves the public very intimately about their homes and their bills and their lifestyles. It's therefore one of the hardest areas of policy because you have to bring people with you because the people who want to slow the pace of change will say, don't let the nanny state tell you you've got to rip out your gas boiler and put something in that you can't afford in your home. So to hear about the positive customers' stories and the positive experience of making a viable business here in a decarbonizing heat market is really, really encouraging. So please keep telling that story and telling it more widely. Now look, from a Westminster perspective, I know there are some policy restrictions that you would like to see change that will help to speed up the growth opportunity for this sector. The energy bill has just come from the House of Lords back into the House of Commons. It's a very big bill. Uh, it's going to take a while to get through. But there are a couple of things in there um, that I think will really help. Uh, I think probably the most important is the reform of energy performance certificates. Uh, we know that the way in which EPCs are uh, performed, how, how the data is calculated, what the outcomes of those EPC ratings mean, have a differential effect on different types of heating. And if we're honest, currently favor the older fossil fuel based forms of heating as opposed to the newer lower carbon forms of heating. Ministers will have powers once this bill has finished in Parliament to reform EPCs in line with our net zero strategy and I think that will be a really encouraging opportunity uh, for growth uh, in this sector. Uh, then of course there's the question about how do you decouple gas and electricity pricing, uh, do you look at locational pricing so if you're next to lots of great wind turbines you might get some uh, cheaper electricity. That will take a little bit longer than EPC reform, um, but the consultations and the debate is happening. Um, and the successor committee to mine, uh, the Energy and Net Zero Committee, um, I know is planning on looking at this issue um, over the summer and into the autumn. So the political debate on this is, is, is continuing with, uh, with pace. And so I hope you take that as encouragement because it's not always the case um, that a disruptive, uh, innovative technology brand is aligned uh, with what's happening in Parliament. Normally we're way behind uh, where you guys are uh, and it can often take years to try to catch up with the technology but I think you're in a really great space here where the primary legislation, the policy debate and what you're trying to do is broadly in the same space. So take that as encouragement for the work that you're going to do and thank you uh, once again. When I talk to constituents, especially young people, about what they want to do uh, in life and in their careers, we know that having impact is really, really important for people. And you're not just doing interesting work, you're not just creating a viable business here, you're providing opportunities for people to help save the planet and change the world. And that's hugely encouraging, um, and uh, I think provides a lot of optimism and hope for young people about the work they might get to do in the future. And the very last thing I will say, because I think I'm the last speaker before you can get the cakes, um, is 
Um, I'm so pleased that we had the conversation, Alison, about heating people as opposed to buildings. I mean, it seems blindingly obvious, but it, you know, whenever you're in Westminster, we talk about the heat and buildings strategy. When we go to the Committee on Climate Change, we talk about buildings emissions. Uh, it doesn't matter if the sofa feels cold. It matters if the person feels cold. And I think this technology, the work that you've been doing together, um, we should try to bring that to Westminster, and I'll take that as an action today, uh, because I think we should try to pivot the debate a bit in our politics about reminding people that it's about heating people and how they do that comfortably and efficiently, not just uh, not, not, not the actual building. Um, so I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for inviting me. And I think we're now going to cut a ribbon. <laughs>